your passion is to put empathy at the center of everything we do. Um, uh, we were just talking to Peggy Johnson backstage, and in the book you talk about bringing her aboard so that Microsoft can be better at being a partner. How does your f role of empathy play into that? You know, in fact, one of the things you got to remember, Walter, I've learned everything that I have about business or leadership um, by, in fact, living inside of Microsoft, observing what Bill and Steve, uh, which is one of the most storied partnerships of business, and what they got right. When I joined the company in 92, what we really got right was to think about platforms and creation of platform opportunity for others, right? Mm -hmm. My job at Microsoft was to recruit third-party developers so that they can come on top of Windows NT and drive success for themselves. I internalized that and I said, look, Microsoft at its best is a platform company, a tools company that empowers others to be able to create more technology. So whenever I look at even competition, I first try to view things not from a zero-sum basis, but what's a way to think about this being expansive? There will clearly be overlaps and there will be some parts that are zero-sum. But can we, in all cases, look for things that we can do together that are more market expansive because we are serving customers together. And that's where what Peggy brings from an outside-in perspective, what people like me have learned inside the company, observing what we've done right in the past, uh, that's really the Microsoft we want to be. We want to be the company that truly not only creates technology, but more importantly creates these opportunities for others to be able to succeed on top of what we do. And your move into the cloud helps empower people to do that both individually and as businesses. Is that one of the theories behind your cloud push? And explain how that happened and is going. For sure. I mean, one of the, you know, in some sense, there's one single line um, from all the way from the basic interpreter on the Altair, uh, which Paul and Bill uh, wrote, uh, to now, which is how do we create, democratize access to technology? In fact, I'm a product of that. Like, if it was not Microsoft's technology reaching me. Did you code on BASIC for the Altair? Yes, that was the, well, not on the Altair. I learned it on Sinclair. Um, but and it was the same BASIC, It was right? the same BASIC, and then I finally uh, got to a PC um, and, you know, learned my coding in BASIC. That was my first programming, then went to Pascal, and then, and there on. Uh, but I think of that as the very essence of who we are, which is we democratize technology so that others can create technology. And the cloud does a few things. In fact, you know, I was recently visiting um, uh, India, and you know, in the 90s when I was working in our server products, we achieved tremendous amount of success in client-server computing. Uh, but guess what? We never really were able to sell many servers in India because it was just too expensive. The IT sophistication was not there. The, you know, the ability uh, or the pricing was just hard uh, for people to build up their own data centers. Whereas now in the cloud, when it's all elastic, you pay for what you use, uh, I see now the smallest of businesses in India subscribing to our Office 365 or Microsoft 365 service, or uh, a small developer in the, in the country able to just tap into Azure and build applications. That ability to take cloud technology and essentially democratize access uh, in all parts of the world for small businesses, individual developers, public sector is, is, I think, very much what we seek to achieve with the cloud revolution. And with that, let me ask you my final question, if I may, because you were on this stage, or you were at least in Orlando, I don't remember if it was this stage, two years ago, and you talked very personally, not about product, but about culture and about the need to transform Microsoft's culture with empathy, but uh, with a sense of motivation. And you mentioned it earlier about basic empowering individuals. What would you have everybody listening to you take away both from your book and your stewardship of Microsoft 
about the culture and values you want to create. You know, one of the things, in fact, the way you recounted the life of Da Vinci, that, that sense of curiosity, right? After all, that was the sense that we had when we started Microsoft, when Bill and Paul started Microsoft and the company that uh, Steve and Bill built, was all about being curious about what can we do with this power of software. But then somewhere along the line as we succeeded, we sort of became the know-it-alls. <laughs> and we needed to get back to being the learn-it-alls. Uh, that transition Right, which comes, and that's why I invoke this work of Carol Dweck and the growth mindset uh, as the cultural meme we talk about. Uh, because uh, sometimes, you know, even in Microsoft once in a while, people will come to me and say, hey, Satya, we found the five people who don't have a growth mindset. I mean, that's not the point. Uh, the point is for us each day, starting with me to confront my fixed mindset. I mean, to know that I will never truly ever have this some ideal thing called the growth mindset, but every day I'm gonna push myself to be more curious, to learn. That's clearly something that I think we have to do, and I think all of us in some sense seek to do. But there's one other thing. There was this gentleman whom I worked for, I was probably in the mid-30s, uh, Doug Burgum, uh, who happens to be the governor of, the, of North Dakota right now. Um, and he said something to me which really stuck with me, and, uh, which is, you say, look, you know, you're going to spend more time uh, at Microsoft than with your kids. And then when he said that, uh, I said, hey, what is he saying? I mean, and why is he saying it was another thing that I thought about. Um, but over the years, it's really dawned on me that it's true. I've spent 25 years of my life at Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And it can't just be a transaction. It can't be something that I look back and say, oh, I just worked at Microsoft. It has to have some deeper meaning. So one of the things that at that particular moment I was recounting, which in the book, was I was trying to invoke, starting with me, quite frankly, it was as much for reminding myself as it is for anyone else at Microsoft that, look, we all work at Microsoft. We all work in any company here out of choice. It, why don't we invert the equation? Let us think of Microsoft working as a platform for me to achieve my personal passion, my personal philosophy. And if we can get that equation, even right few times, the amount of satisfaction you'll draw from it and the amount of impact you'll have is going to be exponential. And so to me, that cultural insight that comes from growth mindset or more importantly confronting your own fixed mindset every day and then being able to f drive this deeper meaning in your work those are the two things that is sort of top of mind for me as we think about our culture and having a deeper meaning that has a purpose uh, that's what you bring to this book I know you love a book called Soul of a New Machine a Tracy Ketter book but you have been, as I noticed reading this book, The Soul of a New Corporation. Thank you very much. Thank Dr. you so much, Walter. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.